Welcome back to the Nordic Championship. I'm a scoundrel joined by Orcs, and we have just seen Singularity guide themselves to a 4-0 victory, or should I say specifically Nilly guiding Singularity to a 4-0 record in the Nordic Championship so far? Yeah, they basically pointed him at the other team and went go, and he did, and had a great performance, just dominant. I mean, you often see teams where a player can get a lead, uh, and then, you know, use that lead to have a somewhat of an advantage. But that was just crushing. He ran away with it in that game. And the fact that in the later stages, he was 8,000 gold up on his lane opponent, opponent was pretty insane. I think, to be honest, they needed him, though, because the rest of the team were not having the games of their life versus Hillerod. And especially yeah. the bot side of the map was doing really well for Hillerod. I mean, the, uh, the Mox on, on Ophelios just looked insane. Yeah, well, I think a big factor there was the Soraka was picked up, and uh, I saw Scoo talking about on Twitter initially it was going to go top, and yeah. then the Yorick was picked blind, and they were like, Nelly on Aurelia, which mm. is something he played yesterday, but a good matchup on the Yorick, and uh, that was slightly better than a good matchup for him. Yeah, I think uh, when you first pick Soraka, you're not expecting it to go support. I think everyone assumed that it was going to be top lane Soraka, but the needs of the draft changed throughout the... Uh Power of flex picks. There you go, the power of flex picks. All right, so we're going to be jumping into our final game of the night. It is going to be Vipers taking on Hybrid. Uh, what do we know about these two guys coming in? They're the more middle of the packish teams, right, coming into this. Yeah, Vipers had a good start in week one, but I definitely think a large factor of that was the, uh, they were kind of against some of the weaker end teams. They struggled a little bit against Bifrost. Uh, Paulson looked very good, but overall, I feel like the draft didn't really fit that well. Uh, they had things like the terminal support, which really couldn't threaten the composition of Bifrost to had to sort of protect the AD carry comp. Uh, and Hidden had a really bad game. I mean, like, tragically bad. Like, possibly the... I mean, it's, it's going very hard, but possibly the worst performance we've seen so far in the Nordic Champions. So, I've seen Hidden. He's played in the UK before. He needs to bounce back. Uh, it... People can have those games. You can have a terrible one. Lockheed Dunn just had a very rough game. It's about bouncing back in the next one and see what you can do. Polson has been really solid. Lundorf, then Voxney, Bubba, Bully all had strong performances. So it's just coming together and coming ahead in this one. On the other side, Hybrid, Priskanet was an absolute monster in his games. Axis was great. Yike was great. And it's not like Akana and Mervs were bad by any means. And they, they, they made a really easy to execute composition against Nordavind, which just made Chrisberg unable to play the game and it was on the back of Ziggs for Priskanet so I think I'm expecting a Ziggs ban because no one's yet been able to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, Priskanet has been one of those players. We saw him in the 2019 Spring European Masters, I believe. Um, Kakan we've seen at a high level as well. A lot of good players on the hybrid roster, but like you said, Priskanet kind of stepping up as kind of one of the main carries for this roster as well. Going to be Braum banned out, Cassiopeia, Akali. No Ziggs ban as of yet. The Nunu, again, like you said, there's some targeted bans against Hedon, and I think it's Nunu and Elise generally tend to be focused at him. I mean, that's what was banned away from him, and then the Jarvan was denied, and it forced him on the Gragas, and he just didn't look good. So it could have been just a bad game, but it could be he's not as comfortable in that champion, and that's something that Hidden has had issues with with a limited champion pool. But in this situation, hopefully he's feeling confident for a reset. Yike has been a strong performer, though, so that is my concern. Question is, will we see the Ziggs taken away from Priskanet? No, we've seen the Jarvan ban away, so another jungle ban away from Hidden. And the question's got to be, what does he take? Elise is gone. He did play Skarna last week. Sure. And was... Jarvan is extremely good in a Skarna, because obviously when you drag someone, you can cage it up. So You were mentioning that he's one of the few Nordic junglers that you don't think has got Lee Sin, or at least hasn't shown to play Lee Sin, which mm. is interesting because it has been one of the hotly contested jungle yeah. picks. It feels like there's a lot of trade-offs of Jarvan and Lee Sin going on at the moment, and almost every jungler is happy with both of those champions. But Hidden hasn't yet shown he's willing to take the Lee Sin uh, in almost any situation. We see the Orn picked up quickly for Lundorf, likely to go top, and Lundorf really confident on this champion. He's shown a lot of promise on it. It's obviously he's the big factor in the first game they played wasn't just him in the lane, because, you know, you don't play Orn for the lane. It was the fact that he roamed around the map and consistently was setting up for objectives by joining his team and allowing them to pick them up. Braun being banned away did kind of suggest this as an option, and it gives some strong engage potential. But Hybrid going to pick up the Leon of Axis. This is what he yeah. played yesterday. He was so good on this champion. And then the Gragas for Yike, I think, again, as a denial away from Hidden. This is really testing his pool with four junglers away. And yeah. he kind of has to pick it on this rotation, otherwise more junglers are going to go down into the ban. Yeah, and if it um, is the Skana, the Grag is a good intro because if he does ult someone, you can just use your cask to knock them further into the team. But for now, the Voxnay potentially looking towards that Aphelios. We saw Mokox have a great game on it, however unsuccessful, but going to be secured for them. It, it was the shining light for... Um, uh, for 
literally just my Hillerod. Hillerod. It was the shining light for Hillerod in that last game, to be honest with you. He um, he generally was one of the standout players for them. And I think maybe either driven by Aphelios or just driven by him having a particularly good game. But and we all know Aphelios is very strong and actually has been dropping down the priority list for some of these teams this week. It's going to be Tom Kench locked in and we'll see exactly what a hybrid decide to run with now that they've got the option here. So it'll be interesting if we did see a Talia, because Priscanet was a very big Talia player back when it was super meta in the mid lane. So definitely viable as a flex, but also works well in tandem with the Leona. Oriana would function as a safe blind for the mid lane, but it's the Ziggs. I'm not surprised to see this. You know, if it ain't broke, don't why fix, fix it? it? Yeah. yeah. Um, he's uh, he's shown to be incredibly proficient on the Ziggs. They don't quite have the lockdown that they had previously with the Javan. You know, they just had the, the Javan where you'd ult a target press R. They had a Gangplank as yeah, well. Yeah, and they had the Gangplank too. Gangplank is still available if that's what they want to run in the top yeah. lane for Kakan. We'll have to see. Big thing, however, is last time that matchup, the enemy team had Braum. Uh, here, that's not available. They took the Tom Kench. Obviously, you can't swallow your AD carry, just completely negate all of that damage. So. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, you, you really feel like Denvoxney is going to be fairly comfortable, even if he does get targeted by a lot of these uh, hybrid players. But then, obviously, that makes uh, Bebop a little bit more vulnerable as well. You know, there's, yep. there's plenty. I mean, Leone can lock, just lock down the time Kench. He's very slow, very easy of a kill. I'd like to see him take cleanse in yeah. this situation. Yeah. So if you do get ulted, both of you by the Leona or stunned, you can still cleanse, eat, their Vox and keep him safe. Even if the Tom dies, you've done your job and evaded a lot of burst. My big question is what Paulson is going to play. He's shown a lot of strength on aggressive picks like the Diana, like the Akali. He's playing up against Priston against Ziggs, which has LeBlanc, been so good maybe? as a negator. Potentially, we saw Knight trying to play that matchup into the Ziggs and fail miserably yesterday. So, Paulson has something up his sleeve that's going to be able to deal with the Ziggs. I'd like to see it, but very hard to challenge someone with so much wave clear, but also zoning tools as well. Gangplank does indeed get bland out. It's a pretty solid blind pick, but I think at this point you just pick your AD carry, right? If you're, if you're, unless you, you're threatening a maybe Ziggs bot lane, which we haven't seen in a very long time. I, and with Priskinet being yeah. the Ziggs play, I, I would, wouldn't expect it. I feel like if you did that, then you'd probably move Priskinet in the bot lane because he's so adept with it. But they're just going to go for the Zaya for Mib. So offers an element of safety uh, away from the Ornal, because obviously you can jump in the air to dodge that one. Uh, and then good layering of CC with the Leona. So if they do stun up the Tom Kench, you can then root as a follow-up and potentially burst through him. Um, I mean, you know the top lane that you're going into, right? I mean, unless it's on jungle, which we have seen a little bit of. Or mid uh, has been showing yeah. up. So it's still potential but versus to Versus Ziggs, would you play that? Probably not, but I mean... Stranger things have happened. Yeah. Stranger things have happened. It is going to be the Skarner locked in for Hedon, so that's going to be their jungler. Yeah, not too um, much of a surprise there. And if you can get on top of the Ziggs, it's pretty powerful, but it's going to be difficult when you look at the fact that they have a Zaya, they have a Leona, they have a Gragas when they're grouped up. Now it's for Paulson, and I feel like they need a big carry for him to round out this composition. Question is, what's going to be able to set, set him up to deal with the Ziggs? Syndra banned. Syndra's not banned. There we Look go. Well, there you go. You spot out. Syndra's locked in for Paulson. It's one of the better picks, I think, in this scenario. Yeah. Uh, can definitely deal with the Ziggs. Matches his wave clear. If you land a stun, there's all in potential. And the big thing is, at level six, there is very much kill pressure on both Prisconet and Yike available. I was so. just assuming Syndra was banned. We yeah, see banned I think that's a normal thing when you see it fly through. But a lot of interesting bans on early Cassiopeia, the Braum, the Nunu, obviously taking some power picks away. And this one kind of flew under the radar so far. Kakan going to go for the Aatrox, a fine matchup into the Orn, and obviously a great team fighter later on and something he's more than comfortable on. So overall, Vipers, I like their draft. I feel like they've, they've got tools to deal with. I think it was better than their yesterday's draft where I was sort of questioning some decisions. Their bot lane is in a position to keep them Voxnay safe. They have an aggressive mid laner who at post six can be set up by Hidden and then Lundorf on his Orn, which he's happy with. It's a solid all round. My concern is though against hybrid, hybrid have great wave clear, they have really solid engage tools, and they also have great disengage. And, and that's my sort of question mark is if Lundorf lands his ult, if Hidden's running at them, the Ziggs, the Zaya, the Gragas can cause so many issues. So I feel like the pace will be better set by hybrid, but Vipers have definitely given them a strong draft so far. Yep, I think I, I like Vipers draft. I like what they've got. Um, my one worry, is that the later this goes, the more powerful Ziggs becomes. I don't think they're going to have the tools to effectively deal with him if he can just maintain range. Yeah, and a big concern as well is you have two carries on the side of Vipers. You have the Syndra and you have the Aphelios. And no one else, basically. If one of them goes down, you're not really doing much. 
And usually if you take out Aphelios, then you just have Syndra, who's mostly single target focused for her uh, her actual, f you know, full damage potential. Yeah, I mean, she still has decent AoE, but the problem is Syndra's hard to play when you're threatened. If they're constantly jumping on her, and if, let's say you, you manage to land a Ziggzal on top of them, Tom Kent eats, say, the Aphelios, that's a couple of seconds where Aphelios is doing no damage. Mm. That's a Syndra potentially going down. And I think that's the thing is that in the later stages, Syndra and Aphelios, uh, Paulson and Denvoxian have to be playing so well if they are to win it, uh, win out I think it's a hard comp composition. Unless you snowball, I think it's a hard composition for, for Vipers to execute on. Yeah, but I, true. But I do think that if anyone is going to step up on this roster, it's Tim Voxney and Paulson. Yes. Tim Voxney's kiting has been stellar in every game. I mean, when he and first Paulson's burst onto the UK scene, he was incredibly impressive. Yeah. So. I think um, I think Devos and Paulson are the people that you want to give the mantle to to win if you're Vipers. However, they are going up against Hybrid, who have looked impressive, and you Orcs especially have been impressed with their drafts so far. Yeah, they've often drafted easy to execute compositions and putting themselves in a position where the co composition plays itself. I think Vipers have reacted well though here. I don't think there's a, just a, a raw advantage on either side. It's going to come largely down to execution. Both of them have late game options. Both of them have opportunities to be aggressive early. My only concern is I feel like Viper's very centric around the mid lane. If Paulson struggles into Prisco Net's zigs, they may start to have a problem in the early stages. So, so far we've seen Niter try and handle the zigs of Prisco Net and fail spectacularly. Now it's up to Paulson to see if he can challenge it. Well, it is something that someone needs to find an answer to eventually because if Prisconet can just continue to pick this if he wants to, and if he just continues to pick the Ziggs and people fail to find a really good answer, then it's just another really useful tool that Hybrid have got in there. If only there was like a phase between before the game where you could like select champions, but not to play, but for the other team to be unable to play. Almost like you'd deny them. Yeah, like I don't know. I don't know what, what I don't know what I would no, you just you said ban phase. I, I, I didn't know what to call it, but you've kind of put the Wait, that's a pretty good name for it, isn't that's it? That's a pretty good name for it. Yeah, ban phase. I guess you could ban Ziggs, but we'll see. We'll see I, I whether guess, it's justified. I, I guess maybe it's on the, the currently on the cusp of whether it's worth banning or not. Like maybe maybe people are still willing to test things out versus this yeah. Ziggs. I mean, a big factor here is Paulson managed to get Syndra to fly through the draft and get it in a late rotation, which is unexpected. Um, and also, there's a lot of power picks already that you have to ban uh, that you don't want to deal with, the likes of Akali. Uh, so I feel like maybe throwing a ban at the Ziggs is going to hurt a lot, especially if you're on red side. But either way, I guess we'll see after this game whether Paulson can hold up to Prisconet on the Ziggs. Does have TP is a difference, but already some heavy trades coming out. And remember, Prisconet has to heal for all ins, but not the TP to sort of reset from the lane. Yeah, so taking basically an even blow there. Paulson and Prisconet essentially trading exactly the same percentages in HP. Well, jungler's going for full clears here on the top side of the jungle and passing down. We've seen a lot of buff to buff and then revolving around the extra camps, but both of them just essentially going for a pretty slow pace. Yike can reset here and pick up the Predator if he wants, but I think he's just going to continue on his path. Uh, hitting a little bit faster on the clear, the power of the Skarno when the Shrines are available. I mean, Yike doesn't have many good ganking opportunities right now. I mean, that, that mid lane maybe, but... It's a, it's a zigs at the end of the day. It's not like you're going to be able to apply much more CC. I mean, you can see that Kakan's pushed in considerably and he started red side, so he's never going to rotate back up to top and miss his entire bottom side jungle. Yeah, he could look for the scuttle on the bot side. His bot lane do have priority just slightly, so they would be able to move first. You can see him pinging it out. But... Yes, I mean, yeah, so they've been able to push this wave in, which is good because he's going to be able to get this. He's going to be able to get this scuttle. It doesn't even look like he don't want to uh, contest this. He's actually just going to let that happen. Yeah, and the priority war also won by Prisconet here, so he's able to establish some vision control. Maybe he's got a little bit low on HP though, that's a trading power of his Aphelios, and with the uh, Severum as well, you can sustain up any damage thrown back in return. With the Leona, you want to look for those all-ins, but not super possible against the likes of a Tom Kench. Hidden just going to reset after doing a full clear and head up towards that top side. Actually, he's going to look for something here. There is a ward, and spotting him out, he will just back away. Kakan somehow takes a really awful trade versus Lundorf here. Felt like he was in control. For, oh, wait, the first blood happened in the mid lane. Yike didn't even have to burn a flash. They didn't even have to burn a flash. 
against Paulson, and Paulson gets caught out, and Priskanet is going to be able to shove this in. Lundorf gets the solo kill onto Kakan. Orn versus Aatrox. That is a real feels bad man. Yeah, not really sure what went on there. I mean, there is a lot of trading power in an Orn early game, but he's gone spell books, so it's not even like he's relying on grasp. Lundorf is someone who will look to go aggressive in those trades, but Kakan, massive mistakes here, and I did, I did have a little uh, bit of concerns for him because typically hybrid play him as a weak side uh, player. And even on the gangplank, there were some times he was taking rough trades. But here it's cost him a whole kill. But fortunately, Yike able to find a good gank mid. And that is one thing. If you do land the body slam on the Syndra, very easy to follow up with the satchel charge. And they did buff that. So it now knocks enemies further. So you're going to get launched further into your own team. But now Kakan going to TP up. And Lundorf, Lundorf just matched and has that chain vest now as a massive advantage to really mitigating the damage available to Kakan. Yeah, that's going to allow him to sustain much more readily as Yike trades back in to Heathen, just trying to put as much pressure down as possible. Priskinet running through and they're just going to ward him away from Yike's jungle. Yeah, force him out. No counter jungle today for the Skarner. And that's again, Priskinet having the mid lane priority means he can essentially move when he pleases. So far, Paulson. Struggling in this matchup may not necessarily be the answer, but at level six for the Syndra and also with the ultimate available for the Skarner, that's when they can potentially look to take out Priskanet. Come on, Priskanet, you just missed three CS in a row, mate. What's going on? He just uses the abilities. Yeah, got it. That's what that's that's the way I found six though. So. Yeah, that, that's the, the sort of mage opting out where it's like, oh CSing with autos is too hard. I'm just gonna throw I mean it is hard. Spells. Yeah. CSing with autos is hard, you're not wrong. So they're going to use that mid lane priority. Uh, they don't really have bot priority, so I guess they're trying to sneak this. I don't know if anyone's spotted it out well, just there yet. There is a war. Is the war is it, I don't think it spots it out. It's not now, but I'm pretty sure when coming in, it would have spotted them. I mean, they definitely saw them there. Yeah, yeah, okay, they just saw them pop off there. So If no, they're watching the mini maps, you know. I'm sure they must see this going good on. Good summoners who always watch their mini maps, but engage comes in. Lundorf! Oh. How is Kakan I mean, I guess the aim advantage now is coming into play, but. Kakan, really, you should not be struggling this hard in this matchup. No, Lundorf really just popping off. A bit of a CS disadvantage that has opened up, but Kakan's just going to have to accept that and uh, take that as a win if he can. You really shouldn't be struggling this much in the matchup, though, versus the Orn Aatrox matchup. It's not that hard. Yeah. He must just be letting Orn get off for some really, really strong... Just getting into his face if you use yeah. this... Uh, the bellows breath and then proc the brittle and i think that's the thing with aatrox if you if someone's up close to you and uh, you're unable to actually land your darking blades effectively yeah you can't even, get the edges yeah even the third one the final one if you're right next to him it actually goes a little bit outside of that range so you don't take much damage and i think that's the problem khan is having not setting them up effectively you've got to try and maintain at least a little bit of range in melee matchups with aatrox because yeah. you get the extra damage at the edge of your darking blade and that's the thing Usually on Aatrox, what he used to do when he was more powerful and had more shoving power is you essentially just cut through the waves and while you're doing that, you trade at a reasonable range. You wouldn't want to engage with melee champions up close. Um, Kakan, learning that lesson the hard way. Have a look at the items. Another double ruby crystal picked up by Lundorf here. So just trying to make himself as tanky as possible in the early game. Doesn't want to give away too much. And actually, they've enacted a very early swap here, I guess, to try and prioritize the Rift Herald, because they've already picked up that Dragon, so they're going to make a very early swap to prioritize that Rift Herald. Yeah, and I, I always praise this, this swap. It's pretty common, uh, but there are teams in the Nordics who don't go for it. So when the Dragon is off the table, there's nothing really worth staying around on the bot side when Herald is an option. They go for a swap to move up, but now Claps coming to mid, hitting his six. Take the engage, they get the ult onto him, and he's going to get taken down very low. Actually, he manages to survive with a brilliantly timed oh, great devour flash. of a I don't think they're going to get the kill here, but it was a great saving private Hedon that came out from the entire Vipers roster. So many great things there. So the stun from Axis stopped Hidden Dragon away, and then the cast knocked him back. The flash in from Bebop Bully to save him, and then the end, Bebop Bully flashes. Actually, no, I don't I think, yeah, he flashed in to save him, and then the end, he moves forward and tries to tongue lash the Leona to kill, but Yike flashes to block it. So just so many little micro things that ended up, no kills going down as a result, but very back and forth between these two teams in a pretty chaotic skirmish in the mid lane. But the big thing is, ult used by Hidden, flash as well, and these are massive tools for the Skarner. Nothing really came from it. Actors is going to make his way. 
back to the top lane to support Murbs, who has had a pretty subdued game so far after losing his life very early on. It's just going to relax. No, no, Merz hasn't lost his life. What am I talking about? Yeah, I was thinking. I, I actually, my vision is so bad that I blurred the one assist from Prisk to Merb's death. Hmm. Huh. Okay, Khan, sort of learning how to play this matchup hmm. now. Hmm. I don't know what else to say. You know, hmm. Maybe you should get some glasses. I do have some glasses. I just left them at home. Wear really. some glasses. Yeah, that's the only home. thing you left at home. Well said, you got home. Well, you left your shirt at the flat. Oh, I left my shirt at the apartment. I had to go actually go buy some new shirts just before broadcast. But that was a big payoff because we got matching shirts. We did get matching shirts. So we had a victory. Yes, and I actually found, I think that shop was awesome. So I think we, we found a little hidden gem there. Yeah. Can't kind of actually going in aggressive, trying to put pressure onto Lundorf. Lundorf does have teleport. No, he doesn't have teleport. He's got the ignite right now. So can't actually get back to lane quickly. There is still four minutes left on plate. So maybe Kakan can pick up some plates here. Doesn't really have the wave right now to do it. Vipers getting that Herald though, managing to sneak that one from under the nose of Hybrid and getting away with it. I feel like now, Wave Push coming in from Mibs, reset now and they'll move back to the bot side of the map. You can see Dragon spawning in a minute from here. So Devox is going to try and shove this wave out quickly, but he will be delayed. He will get back later. Tongue Lash doesn't stop the recoil. That's pretty important because it means Hybrid will be on the bot side of the map quicker to set up for this Dragon. Yep, and uh, it looks like maybe even Devoxny and... Uh, no, they're going, to, they're going to push this wave. They're not even going to be greedy to go for the plates. I think they need to be there to contest that dragon. You don't want to let it... Like, start to stack up for Start free. to stack up, yeah. Uh, but 30 seconds is a timer. Axe is already in the vicinity to put wards down, and it means it's going to be a difficult contest because Vipers have to walk into Fog. And if you look at the team composition of Hybrid, Walk into fog against the Ziggs. If you walk on the, uh, the minefield, it does so much damage. There's a Leona, there's this Zaya, so much CC. Makes it a very risky endeavor. Unfortunately, Lundorf doesn't have teleport right now. So it's up to uh, Poulsen to potentially match or, or head up towards Kakan. He's actually going to teleport straight down bot. So they are just going to sacrifice any kind of top lane, which they don't really care about right now, and yeah. go straight to contest for this dragon. They actually steal away the River Scuttler as well. Hybrid can play this slow. They're getting plates on the top side from Kakan. They can wait a little bit of time I before think that... TPing in. Remember, if Vipers corral into this pit, they could potentially look for a fight here, but I think they might... Pro oh, TP's coming in now. They want to fight this. I think they're too late, though. I think they're going to let this Dragon's going to go down immediately. I think they have to go right now if they want to try and contest it. The Featherstorm has already been used by Murbs, by the way. That was very early on in the fight. They do end up losing this Dragon. On the sidelines, though, Kakan trying to find a flank. The ultimate from Axis was not good enough to engage the fight, but Lundorf is not ready to stop. They force the stopwatch out, and this should just be Axis going down. Vipers will pick up the kill and the Dragon, and just some... Maybe even more than that as well as uh, Kakan is forced to flash away. I don't know. I don't know about that positioning. I, I, I feel like they got zoned out very quickly and just yes. couldn't find their feet quickly enough. Hybrid gave up too much posture over the side of Vipers. They completely scarpered from the Dragon area. And then when they tried to push in, it was a bit too difficult. There were so much threats from Vipers. The, the sentry turret being placed down by Demvoxney with the Crescendum. The Syndra having the burst available. And Axis was the one to bear the brunt of that. So I think a little bit of a late read from Hybrid on whether they wanted to contest that. You will see, however, they've swapped their bot lane back up to the top side, and they've done this faster than Vipers. So they will be able to get a little bit of control over here, but it's still a while before that Herald does spawn. It's quite some time. Three it's minutes. Three minutes. And, and they also lost, even though they swapped first, the top side of the map, they also lost the first Rift Herald. So yeah. their objective control has been a little bit lackluster in the last few minutes. And honestly, Viper, they've been impressive. Yeah, Hybrid's, has been, Hybrid's been swapping first and then still losing out on the objectives. They lost the Dragon, they lost the Herald. Really weird for that to happen. But I think they're just not posturing in the right position. And now, critically, Kakan burn his TP, but Lundorf doesn't. He cycled through enough summoners and he has that back available. That means this Herald really... Hybrid may just not want to contest it. Well, they've it. got to use the first Herald that they've got so far. I'm assuming they're just going to stick that mid right now because it is on a timer. And it's very quick to running out. Yeah, if you can get a charge on mid and then you can use a set and get the second Herald and use that mid as well, I don't like this decision to throw it down top. Mid tower is so important and so hard to break against the Ziggs. I think this was a bad call. Maybe they just didn't feel like they were ever going to get the chance with where Ziggs was set up. But I, I, th I just think they're not going to get much out of this, this Herald either because they've got the Leona and the, the, uh, the Zaya there to defend it. I mean, they, they're, they're going to get a charge, but I don't think they're going to get the turret. They didn't even get the plate gold for that. 
Well, Pace had fallen before oh, it charged, right? Yeah, right? Um, but regard, yeah, regardless, regardless, yeah, they yeah. They don't get the tower. They don't get any damage on the mid tower, which is massively more important. So, yeah, a little bit lackluster usage of that Herald from Vipers. So that first Herald not really meaning too much here for Vipers, but they are, of course, setting up for that second one, which I believe it is about two minutes time. Long time to go before we get to that stage, though. Kakan still, I wouldn't say excelling in this matchup versus on right now. Hasn't really managed to find anything more than a, a 30 CS advantage or so. Yeah, but he has picked back up considering how rough the early game was in terms yeah. of farm, but... Yeah, Owen pretty solid to hold up in that one. owen has got the Sunfire play as well, so he's probably pretty happy now in that matchup. So the game priority and getting a little bit of vision control over hybrid. Right now, Denvoxney has the Gravitum and the Infernum, which means very easy setup to root multiple targets. And also that huge AoE damage possible. Herald spawning in a minute now. Forces the Feather Storm out of uh, Merbs, but nothing more than that will happen. Ult for ult at the end of the day. Yeah, big factor though, because if they want to contest this Herald, then they're lacking that. Priority to Priska, that means they're able to move first, however. Paulson zoned out to a degree, but they're going to back off. Bebop Bully coming in. Time Cage looking to be aggressive, but they aren't going to be able to get much out of it. Now this, just backs off. This Herald you kind of want to be quick with, because 50 seconds afterwards, the Dragon spawns again. So if, if Vipers are wanting to start, it needs to be pretty fast. They do still have reasonable control of the area, but the vision's kind of lacking. Both supports out of wards now, but neither one really wants to go for a reset because it could essentially sacrifice the Herald. Bebo Bully's going to risk it. No, he's not. He cancelled. No, he's recalling it. Okay, so Bebo Bully's going back now to get wards. He had priority in top lane. And they, 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 I don't think they're set up for this Rev Herald, so he can back off pretty yeah, I easily. I think they might just be switching to go for the Dragon and deciding not to prioritize the Herald. It could be an opportunity for Hybrid to trade. Appears, yeah, they're keeping Mirbs in the top lane. And actually, no, Vipers are just moving back towards the top side. So, picking up the Essence Reaver, they've got item advantage, they've got ward advantage, but they are going to be slower on the map. Prisconet's also got his blue, so he's able to poke a bit more freely, able to zone a little bit more freely in these, these pre team fight setups. Yeah, so it's hard to push in in this situation when Hybrid are already there. The Voxen is catching top wave. Kakan is heading up as well down. as Lundorf. Lundorf and Kakan rotating up towards. This Rift Herald is going to be a very hotly contested objective. Both teams putting a lot of priority on it. So, I mean, if you're, if you're Vipers, you could even potentially just rotate and set up for Dragon. Yeah, he's spawning in five seconds, so that is now potentially going to be opportune. Axis finally goes for a reset, so this is the opportunity for Vipers to push up and contest some of this vision. I mean, they could even push up and try and find their way to one of these objectives. Pings are coming down for the Rift, uh, Rift Herald. Actually, immediately Pings being thrown down for the Dragon, but it does feel like, again, Vipers have the one-up in these contests on the neutral objectives. Yeah, Vipers went for the faster reset and it paid off. Inevitably, it had to come through for Axis to have some wards. And so it means the Vipers get the Herald. On the other side of the map, though, Hybrid going to look to pressure that Dragon. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it quickly enough. I think so. I think there's no vision on this side of the map, and Prisconet has priority. I don't think you can just walk in there. So Hybrid should take that, but that means Vipers, if they want, they can just go top lane and throw their Herald down. Or should be the fall. they could go mid. Which I don't think you're really going to do it. A lot of time wasted there by Hidden. Yeah. Runs, runs all the way mid, now all the way back, and now isn't even going top lane is just randomly farming jungle camps. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you need the Herald to get yeah, you didn't really tower. No, you didn't need the Herald for that top lane tower. That you was going down. You could have potentially gotten a second yeah. uh, if you put it down. And I think he isn't going to go for that. He's just stealing away a lot of jungle camps from the likes of Yike. Uh, and that does mean he still has a Herald late if they want to try and use it mid. But a lot of pressure coming out onto this mid tower from the side of Hybrid. Right. And Paulson just has to step away. Remember, Ziggs can just blow this tower up if he wants with the Satchel charge. There it is. Goodbye. That was maybe a slight error from Heat on there to focus on that red buff over maybe defending that mid lane. Or he, I think it was the indecision from him as well. He kind of hovered between the two lanes. He's like, I can kill Ziggs, I can't kill Ziggs, I can get camps. Cool. Yeah, I'm not going to throw down the Herald mid, but this won't be enough to take down the tower. And Ziggs can just wave clear. If he really needs, he can throw down his ultimate. But the wave's already gone. The, the Herald does some damage, but not enough. And... Pretty lackluster Herald usage so far coming out from Vipers, but they get a kill. Oh, the ultimate coming from Denvox, and they picks that one up, snipes out the Gragas, and they actually may be able to shove onto this mid lane tier one now because unfortunately Priscilla is forced to retreat. I don't think Merbs is going to be able to do this by himself. He does have the Feather Storm if he needs it, but 
That is just going to be the mid lane tower going down regardless. Great play from Dunvoxney, a guy that we said needed to step up for Vipers. You know, you give someone like him the carry, it's going to be that important. Actually, Lundorf going in for the fight here is because here. Paulson has moved back over. And Kakan, I think, is going to be in a rough spot. Incoming Tan Kench, the flash comes through. And again, they invest a lot of resources to burn a flash from Kakan. Yeah, I mean, not exactly the greatest trade, but you don't burn that much in that situation. You've got the mid tower. It does delay your reset pretty heavily. But there's nothing on the map really to take right now. Dragon not for another three minutes. Baron not really on the card. So the cost isn't very high. And they burn the flash from Kakan. The Voxney will catch that mid wave. The thing's going to slow down a little bit here with both mid towers down and no sort of objectives on the cards. We could look towards teams trying to prioritize those bot lane towers. They're both very low. And we can see Hybrid already there in force with three members. If they let Ziggs get near the tower, it's super easy for him just to satchel charge and take it out. Yeah, it's very, very... Oh, he, did it. he didn't even need any minions. He literally just satchel charged it straight away. Uh, Brisk Cadets, Ziggs proving very useful in yet another game here. Manages to keep the gold lead just to about 1,000, which is fantastic for uh, fantastic for Hybrid. Give, given how well Vipers have played this early game, it really does feel like Prisconet has been the player that has kept them rolling in this game so far. That's the power of the Ziggs, highest level in the game, with the highest farm as well, and obviously scales extremely well into the later stages. I'm looking for a pretty heavy trade there, but nothing much to come from it. Lundorf now level 12, can upgrade his item, but hidden. He's looking for something top lane, but Mibs, he's miles away. He has the Featherstorm. Yeah, not much that he don't could do. He may be trying to force the Featherstorm out, but... It is a long cooldown now, but to be honest, I don't think you're really going to be able to transition it into anything. Baron, not the easiest to take right now, this early in the game, with it just having spawned. But the vision's still going to be maintained by Vipers in the Baron area. Right now, Paulson going for a freeze in the top lane. Essentially limiting where the side of hybrid can farm. And I think that's a good call in the current state of things. Dragon is still two minutes away. Baron's not on the card. So denying farm when you can, can be a big factor. And if you start sharing CS between the Ziggs and the Zaya, it's not only sharing the gold, but the XP as well. Kakan has just been attempting to put as much pressure onto Lundorf in this sideline as possible. But honestly, at this point, I think the kill pressure for Aatrox has kind of evaporated versus the Orn. Yeah. I don't think you're going to find many one-on-one -on -one kills. You're just looking to shove that lane in and try and keep Orn locked in as much as possible. Because without the CC of the Orn ultimate, it reduces the teamfight prowess of Vipers. And that's kind of what hybrid need here, especially when you want to keep your backline a bit safe. I like that, Zix. Yeah, and uh, Kakan can always, always interrupt Lundorf's ult if he's in close range. Mm. You see Hidden potentially looking for Prisconet. Prisconet wanted to break the siege, I mean the freeze in the top lane, by walking up there and just beating up on the wave. But it looks like Paulson just going to reset it and try once more. Well, I think he's just going to clear the wave out. Potentially overextended now. Mm, I think he'll get away with it though. He is going to yeah. back away. He just clears the wave out. He now has an opportunity to reset. 40 seconds on the next dragon is going to be the objective to prioritize. But what Hybrid are doing well is keeping vision control on the Baron. So now Vipers, they don't want to move all their resources over to the Dragon with no vision on the Baron Nash buff. So they have to move through and clear up, and that allows a little bit of an opportunity for Hybrid to potentially get some wards down in the bot side river, but it looks like they're not really too eager to do so. Instead, just playing quite safe back. I feel like that was a good setup to go for that opportunity. Polson's on the other side of the map as well, so Hybrid could have made something off that. They are now finally moving into the bot side river, the Vipers looking for mid priority instead. Gonna have a pretty big advantage now. They're looking for the Baron. Ooh, they're gonna go straight in here. I wonder if Hybrid have any idea that this is going on. This is the combo of weapons for the Aphelios if you want to rush a Baron. The Severum and the Crescendum do so much DPS and it's going very low. Yike, he doesn't know yet. They, they, they're, they're playing it super chill oh, and they do the get it. Close. The ult was super close, but they've ended up losing the Baron. Nice little Zenith Blade coming out from the Leona to try and isolate the Tan Kench, but in the, instead they can't really get the damage down and it's going to be Denvoxney taking down Kakan. I think Lundov is basically soloing Mervs at this point in time. Nothing they can do and Priskinet trying to bounce back, but he is now also at the whim of the rest of the Vipers lineup. Lundov just a tanky frontline that is unstoppable and Hybrid will be forced to back off. They get away with murder and taking now, that Baron. Now they can look towards the Dragon. It was a great fight coming out from Vipers. The re-engage extremely potent. 
and it was just a great call. The setup was there. They already consistently had uh, vision control in the Baron area. They pushed in to contest that instead of prioritizing the Dragon. And then the ult from Bebop Bully and Devoxony, as I said, had the perfect weapons to DPS through a neutral objective. The Crescendum and the Sever Severum do so much sustained DPS. And it was an easy pickup. And now Vipers have the Baron, 4,000 gold up. And they're in a pretty good place to start pushing down some of these turrets. There's still a lot standing. That's a lot of standing gold available. Yeah, and I think with the Baron, they should be able to start to clean some of these things up. Dimvoxny has been a massive tool in these teamfight situations, and Poulsen had a great teamfight there on the Syndra. Maybe they've cracked this Ziggs code. They've figured out how to deal with it. Upgraded items are starting to pop off now as well. When you're looking at the side of Viper, you double upgraded Abyssal Mask and Sunfire Cape for the Orn. You have the upgraded Infinity Edge already there for Dimvoxny. This is a team that looks very scary to deal with. They've got a 5,000 gold lead. I'm not sure Hybrid can find their way back in easily. They've still got a Ziggs late game scaling though, so they still have that to work with. And these are still in mobile carries. If there's good CC that splits up Vipers, for example, the Gragas cast, there's potential to punish either the Syndra or the Aphelios. But right now, Devoxian and Poulsen are playing really on point, so it's going to be a challenge. They've separated into a 4-1, so Kakan is pushing the bot lane, but he has no TP available. And it looks like Vipers are going to push through into the red side jungle and try and get some vision control. And then with that, potentially rotate topside and challenge his turret. Pushing mid, even with the Baron buff, is a little bit challenging against the Ziggs. Yeah, I mean, Ziggs, regardless, is, is challenged, to push, challenged to push whatever lane. Realistically, he's just got so much consistent wave clear. But Baron makes it slightly easier. Just going to doing what he can. Can't really do much against this uh, empowered cannon minion without stepping into range of the rest of the Viper's lineup. And they will just continue to shove. Mundorf has been a monster, actually. Despite being down in CS, I mean, Kakan has never really found any advantages here. Right now, then Voxney has Infernum and Gravitum. This is a great team fighting combo. Has a CC and AoE. People are bully, though. Oh, it's a really, really good stopwatch as they burn so much. They get Yike, immediately burn him down, and he actually escapes with his life, too. The Orn Ultimate popping off just to try and zone some of Hybrid away. They will take the one kill and the turret for free. Yeah, free pick on a Yike and hidden much better in this game making Yike's life difficult. Ziggs will do very little there, and you can see Priscana unable to pick up massive gold advantages in this situation. The damage just isn't really there to cut through the Viper's lineup. It's looking pretty grim if you're hybrid at this point in time. You have so many, you have quite a few items left to go before Ziggs becomes, you know, one of those one-shotting late game mages. Dimvoxny is just so far ahead. I mean, he's at almost 3,000 gold ahead of, of Murps, who has had a pretty like I said, he's been pretty quiet this game, but in, in that quietness, he hasn't really done much, whereas Dunvoxny has been the one that's come alive for his team, and Paulson as well, second most gold in the game, I think, next to uh, next to Priskinet, but you can just see the two people that needed to step up for Vipers did. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what we talked about in the draft, is that you have these two carries around a sea of tanks. You need them to be performing well, you need them to be in comfortable positions, and they are. We've seen the Rabadons come in for Pulse, and that's been upgraded. Three items to Denvoxnate, including the Runans, makes the AoE insane. Hybrid is going to be a difficult task to contest any fight coming forwards. Right now, Dragon and Baron spawning at around the same time. Dragon won't be a soul for either team. It's not the highest priority, but that Baron, if Vipers get another one, I expect they will start breaking through those inhibitor towers, and things will be very difficult for Hybrid. I think that could be almost be game on the next Baron if it does indeed go down. Hedon has had a good game on the Scanner, though. Like you said, I want to give credit to a guy that we did put a bit of criticism, criticism on coming into a this lot game. Of criticism. A lot I, of criticism. I said he had the worst performance so far in the Nordic Championship. So, very harsh, uh, but he stepped up. He's, he's delivered, and it's on a champion that isn't super in the meta at the moment, isn't something you regularly see play on, but he's comfortable on, and comfort can often be what allows you to bounce back when you've had a rough game. So, solid performance from him. And the Orn is really paying dividends now for Vipers with all these upgraded items starting to run through. Especially when you look at the upgraded Rabadons and Infinity Edge. Big, big pickups for, for Paulson and Dimboxny. This is kind of why Orn is strong right now. He just upgrades everything for that, free. Uh, that and a hundred other reasons, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's very good into melee matchups. You can see Kakan who has struggled with this whole game. I mean, the ultimate is not going to do much. Yeah, a little bit rough angling there. That's a lot invested already from Vipers. Hidden going for the flank here. 
Uh-oh, Kakan. He knows it's happening. He gets dragged back. Don't know. It's going to probably set up the free dragon, but that'll be it. Yeah, and in response, Hybrid going to push up mid and potentially threaten this tower. It looks like the response from Vipers is to push bot lane. There is a Syndra here who can cut through waves pretty quickly if needs be. But so. needs to be super careful because uh, Axis is around. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to get that tower and back away. But Ma Colson trapped mid. Maybe looking for the 4v4 here. Maybe looking for an opportunity to find their way back into the game. Don't think they're going to get there in time. Oh, Bye. yike. You didn't need to go with that steal. That may have just thrown your game out the window as the rest of Vipers will just clean two members of Hybrid up. I feel like Hybrid lost count uh, because that's the third dragon, not the fourth. Maybe they thought it was the fourth dragon. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm joking, but you really do not need to commit that much for a third dragon, especially when Baron is available. I think Vipers can just head over and start that one up. No vision afforded by Axis with him dead. No smite because Jake is unavailable. This uh, is a very easy take for Vipers. The only concern is a poke from Priskanet, but his ult isn't even available. And Devoxney is just cutting through this Baron. Once again, he's got Severum and Crescendum, which is a great combo for neutral objectives. Orn didn't use the second part of his ultimate. He jumps over the wall to put pressure onto Priskanet here. That is just disgusting damage from a tank, by the way, as uh, Paulson might end up going down. They do trade back. It's going to be the ultimate coming through from Dunvoxnay, but uh, they will manage to get Lundorf out of there. They'll trade one for a Baron, but that is perfectly yeah. okay in their books. Yeah, and that bomb nowhere near. Viper's happy. They got that third dragon. They have that Baron in a great position to push down some more towers. They are waiting for Pulson, however, who died somewhat unnecessarily in that situation. But all they'll do is slow Vipers down a little bit. So feel like this is probably Viper's game. Yeah. I don't know what Hybrid can do apart from just tank waves and try and get Priskinet into a position where he has his Rabadons and a Void Staff. I feel like that's the only two item combo that's going to bring him back into a point where he's putting out serious damage in team fights. I mean, yeah, and he's still a whole Rabadons away. Then Foxnay has Stopwatch Blood Durster as well as his three core items for damage and the Tom Kench to assist. And they have a Redemption on Hidden and a locket on Lundorf. I, I really feel like yeah. there's a very low chance you kill that Aphelios. And if he's still alive, they're in a pretty comfortable position. Paulson, a little bit more risky uh, with the fact he doesn't have any defensive items, but he still has Flash, still has a Tom Kench. It's going to be hard. They really need a Miracle and Engage. That's likely going to come off the back of Yike, and he has not had a good performance so far on this Gragas. He has had a hit-on level performance on this Gragas. Yeah. <laughs> You want hidden Skarna, not hidden uh, Gragas. You picked the wrong champion to cosplay hidden. It's ironic, his name. Well, I, I don't think irony is the right do it, but his name's hidden, as in like hidden impact. And uh, his Gragas very much had that, but Skarna definitely looking better. They're ulting down in the bot lane to take this last out of tower. Should have been easy on the track. Now, this, this is an opportunity where both the carries are alone in the mid lane. If you're going to look for a fight, this is it, but they're not stepping up too far. Again, you are starting to see some of the issues facing pushing in the zigs, you know, respectively. They do try and go for the engage straight on. Oh, there's the E. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful setup. And immediately a great stun back. Huge damage coming out from Denvox Day on the ultimate as well. There is the Ord ultimate. The angle not quite right, and they will be backing off. But so much HP Ooh. lost. Denvox Day picks up the kill. They should as well as Priskinet goes down. This might even just be gay. This will be Vipers pushing in, taking at least some inhibitors, maybe even the game, like we said. Probably going to play it safe. It's really great play coming out from Vipers. They dealt with the Zigs. They have good focus on objectives and rotations. And now just going to be able to deliver this game. All comes in. All comes in. That is going to be Axis jumping in too. He'll go down. This will be the second Nexus turret on the plate for Vipers. And at 32 minutes, 33, they will take the win versus Hybrid and set themselves up. It's really solid performance all round. Uh, Dev Voxner looking great on this Aphelios when the team is set up to facilitate him. And I had some concerns because for me, Vipers, they had a good week one uh, with 2-0 start, but I, was, I wasn't I was completely convinced. I felt like their, their run was a little bit of easier teams. I thought this could be a challenge for them in hybrid. And even with the zigs left open, they managed to handle it. They had really smart objective play, hidden uh, when he's not on Gragas looks good. And overall, just solid team play. It really felt like for a long period, Hybrid had no options to get back in the game. Devoxnay looked great that game as well. I think maybe 
coming into next week, you might see people say, oh, wait, Aphelios is a good champion. Yeah, it's the priority in the AD carry is a little bit... Even though Moxox... Moxox how do you pronounce that? Moxox? Moxox. Oh, yeah, good. That's, why, that's the way I thought. Even though Moxox didn't win, he still had a really good performance yeah. on the Aphelios. So, you know, maybe we start to see some Aphelios priority come back into the draft. Because today, we, the first two games especially, we didn't see much of it at all. Second two games, we obviously did. But Aphelios has shone in most of the games that he's played so far. And what's interesting, we've seen a drop in priority for Senna. Uh, Senna's been nerfed on live. And maybe teams adapting to that early. Because so we are still on We're still on 10.2, so she's still strong in the current form. Uh, she did get a pretty significant one where basically her soul stacking is vastly reduced. Mm -hmm. uh, cannons no longer give 100% soul chance. And also, if a melee support uses his uh, targons, it no longer appears. It can now count as uh, Senna killing the minion, so okay. lower soul chance. So, But it, it feels like they've already made the adaptation to the draft. As for the Aphelios... It just seems weird. Some teams have prioritized him more, some teams less, but we've seen it's very much still a powerful champion in the right hands. Well, Vipers getting the win is, uh, is big for them because that's going to allow them to go 2-2 two and two now, I believe, in the standings overall. 3-1. Three 3-1. and, one. Three and one. So they're actually setting themselves up really nicely at the top end of the table. Hybrid now find themselves, I think, 2-2, two and two, right? Yeah. I think for me, Vipers, I, I kind of had this impression that they were middle of the pack, and even though they had a good start, I was like, I'm not convinced. But I think really with this performance, it looks like they can start challenging some of the higher tier teams. I think they've shown that when Hybrid is another middle of the pack team, they are superior. I, I think that there's definitely good potential. It just comes down to everyone playing smartly, effectively, and drafting yourself in a position where Hidden's on a champion where he can't really int as much. Uh, no, I mean, like, I mean, a good performance. People just have some up and down days. Yeah. Hidden played incredibly well on the scanner today. Speaking of up and down games, Yike had a rough one. Yeah, Yike had a rough one. Maybe Gragas is just cursed. There you go, guys. There's my drafting advice for you. Gragas <laughs> is absolutely cursed. Now, we might have, I don't know, do we have updated standings at the end of the day? No. No, we don't have updated standings. So They'll be we posted on Twitter after. If you we want posted to it on Twitter after, therefore, go and check the standings at the end of the day on Twitter. However, we will have the schedule for next week coming up so we can take a look at the games coming up for the following week of the Nordic League and you can see Vipers taking on Dusty. That will be a, a, a test for them, especially with, with the, day, the way that Dusty played today. I think the, the winner of that will really either show us how good Vipers are or if Dusty are one of the teams to contend with in this tournament. Then we're going to have Hillerod versus Nordavind. Nordavind need that win. They cannot afford to lose yet another game, especially with the caliber of players on their team. Yeah, on a three-loss streak, which is feeling rough. Hillerod didn't have... You know, they had, they're on an upswing for sure, but they weren't able to win out that game against Singularity. But Singularity looking like the best team in the league, so mm. it, it, it's, it's always going to be an uphill battle. Nordavind, definitely a, a matchup they can take, so I, I can't they wait need to see that Not one. Not even just they can, they need to take that matchup. Yeah. It has to be a win for them. I mean, Hillerard can take it, is the yeah. thing. That's oh, what I'm saying. True, I think yeah. this is a matchup Hillerard can take because Nordavind not looking good at the moment. Bifrost against Team Singularity. Uh, I feel like there's a singularity. I feel like I a singularity. I think every matchup is team singularity favorite. Yeah, but yeah. I think we're, we're waiting for the upset. Okay, yeah. we're waiting for the upset. Bifrost, maybe they'll be able to offer I mean, singularity it. only looked good for Nile today. So, like, you know, there was there was Nile that stepped up to the plate. And yes, okay, he was set up from the jungle. Skude set him, set him up. But honestly, the rest of the team did not have the performance of their lives. Not to say that they didn't do their job. They knew their win condition. They played to it. But I wouldn't say that singularity is infallible. I would say there is definitely yeah. things that you can do to win that. Didn't even read the last game of the Atlanta day, by the way. against Hybrid. So I think that one's an interesting because Hybrid, again, looked very middle of the pack, looked solid in times, but obviously in that last game struggled. I think Atlando, their matchup against Nordavind, it wasn't just Nordavind on a slump. They looked good. So I feel like that's going to be a pretty close match, and I'm interested to see how it pans out. Yeah, absolutely. So sad. We have to wait till next week. We have to wait till next week. This Sunday at 7 p.m. CET, we'll be kicking off the third week of the Nordic Championship, the Nordic League. So make sure you choose it, tune in and see all of those games. But uh, tomorrow we'll be back at the same time, same place for the UKLC. We'll be continuing the UK League tomorrow. So if you're interested in UK League of Legends, stick around for tomorrow because we will be carrying on the UK saga. Well, maybe then. they're just interested in us. In which case, mm, yeah. No. Oh. Unfortunately not. And on that bombshell, we'll see you soon.